Today we're here at the Wes Watkins Research and Extension Center in Lane, Oklahoma, and joining me today is the Southeast Area Horticulture Specialist, Jim Schreffler. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for coming to visit us. So we came down because you're doing some research here on organic cool season crops and they're in high tunnels. Why are right. you doing research in high tunnels versus just out on the ground? Uh, right now there's over 300 high tunnels in the state being used by different growers. And, and you know, eight years ago that we, it was maybe a, a dozen and a half or so. So that's, there's a lot of interest in that area. In that area. And growers need information, you know, to know what crops to produce, how to grow in these tunnels. So that, that's the reason to be doing this research. Because the environmental conditions are different. Right, yes. Obviously, yes. Mm -hmm. you're changing the environment growing in a high tunnel versus out and exposed right, to the, right, the climate. Right. So. And, and, we, and growers can grow uh, good quality crops 12 months out of the year using these high tunnels here in Oklahoma, especially I, in southern Oklahoma. And, and to establish organic research land, what all is involved to be certified organic? That's... I mean, there's a lot to that, and it's a multi-year process. So you definitely want to maintain right. organic right, lab once, right, right. once you establish. Yeah, it's 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 typically a three-year process from from when you begin to apply to be certified organic, and you have to follow all the organic guidelines as far as you know, uh, not using any unapproved chemicals and, and and managing the soil properly. You know, growing cover crops and things like that. So excellent. Uh, so what are we looking at here, Jim? Okay, what we have in here are about uh, about 30 different varieties of uh, of kales and mustards and there's also a little bit of spinach which is just was just started a little bit later so it's mm -hmm. pretty small still um, and basically what we're doing here is uh, we want to to determine using the hoop house uh, production system uh, which if there be any varieties that are particularly well suited to it if there's any varieties that that are not suited and you know won't won't grow well for one reason or another in, in the high tunnels here on the organic land. Right, because it is so. getting warmer in here than outside, and right. so you've seen right. that some of them are starting to bolt versus right. the others that aren't yet. Yes. And, and we're uh, just in one of your trials. You actually have three hoop houses right, total. Right, there's, th there's three houses identical to this one with, with the same treatments in for, uh -huh. you know, for, for the research purposes. And you've it. randomly selected mm -hmm. where you've put the different crops in each greenhouse. Right, these have been located, all the different varieties have been, you know, randomly located within the, within these beds. And now we have two yeah. different sides here, and you've okay. got two different treatments going right. on. Can you explain that? Yeah, uh, part of this, so part of this, uh, this study is to compare the different varieties, but also we're doing that comparison using two different organic crew soil fertility management approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's this bed here. Uh, we, we did a soil test, we determined what, what nutrients were needed, and then we used a manure-based product. Uh, it, it was a poultry-based um, poultry product, mm -hmm. manure product, to, uh, to adjust the soil fertility, and then additional some bone meal and, and, and some other things to, to get it to right where it was. And the other one, we didn't use the manure, we only used the, uh, the, uh, the, other, uh, the other nutrient sources. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is some, some growers, if you're growing greens crops, some growers may not want to run any risk of using a manure in there that could produce, uh, contaminate the crop with pathogens that could, you know, be potentially harmful to the consumer. Right, right. So yeah. you're kind of researching which one might be better, if there's a significant difference to, between the two. To see if two. it makes a difference. You right. Know, if somebody's interested in getting some more information right now, is there something that they could look at? Is, is there a website or a department that they could go to? to there's, uh, we had a previous study similar. Uh, mm -hmm. We didn't have so many varieties in it, but with you know some of the different greens crops. Jim, you mentioned that this is an organic research facility, and um, you haven't had too many insect problems, and you've treated your soil with organic fertilizers. What about the weed problems? How do you take care of that? Okay, that's when you're growing organically. That is one of the big challenges that you're going to face because. Um, many of the herbicides that vegetable growers would normally use cannot be used on the organic land. Mm -hmm. So we end up having to do a fair amount of land, uh, hand labor, uh, such as hoeing to keep the weeds mm -hmm. controlled. But what's important is to, to get the proper tools that, that, that do the job most efficiently. And one of those tools that we've been using and found really good results with is this, uh, is this type of uh, scuffle hoe, mm -hmm. we call it. It's basically just a flat blade that you run it along the surface and here we have some spinach that's uh, kind of small you can see the rows of it but the weeds are getting started in there and this with this tool you just very gently run it underneath and you can even go underneath your drip irrigation 
without too much trouble uh, to clean those weeds up. And that's all it takes. You know, you don't need to do any chopping or digging deep or those weeds, those weeds are going to dry up uh, just from, just from cutting them off like that. So you're just exposing their roots. Right. So Jim, in this greenhouse, you have something else that you're growing. You've got onions. So right. tell us why you're growing onions here. Okay. Uh, here in Oklahoma, based on research done in the past, the best way to grow onions is by using transplants. Mm -hmm. And those, you know, there you'll see them in all the garden centers beginning in late January and throughout February. Right. Um, you know, and many people plant onions in their garden and commercial growers too. Uh, and you're talking about you, the bundles? Right, those bundles. Of, yeah, right, yeah. Right. Uh -huh. So these are some of the same variety. This is a variety as candy actually, but for an, for an organic grower, uh, they can't use those plants that are sold. They're, they're not grown organically. They can't use those trans, transplants if they're certified organic. Uh, that's one reason, uh, and based on several other reasons, you know, of just being able to grow plants of the variety that you want. If you, if you can buy the seed, but you can't buy the plants, mm -hmm. it's a way to grow your own plants. Or if you just want to be sure that, that you have good quality plants, mm -hmm. uh, you can grow your own. So, so when do and, and, you plant the seeds for onions? Okay, we've, uh, we've done about 10 years of research on this, and basically any t anywhere from mid-October, here in southern Oklahoma, mm -hmm. mid-October until uh, mid-November, you can plant those seeds in here and, and, and get them started and they'll grow through the winter time and the plants will be ready to transplant about the end of February. Okay. So. Um, and of course you wouldn't want to continue growing these out because they're planted so densely they wouldn't be able to develop a bulb. So right. that's why we're talking right. specifically for uh, harvesting them as transplants. Right. Um, these, uh, and here's some that I just, just pulled out uh, yesterday of these, of these same plants here. Uh, these can be spaced out at about four inches in, you know, in the row in the garden and all that. And these plants, even though it's a little bit late, this, this, this variety is called candy. It bulbs a little bit later than some of the other ones. Those, this cyst still has good potential to make good, uh, you know, four inch diameter bulbs for this year. In, in, in July, they'd be ready. And you've got these so, growing straight in sand here. Right. We, this, uh, this was a research project comparing some different types of growing medium, uh, basically the field soil or sand or mixtures of sand and potting soils, uh, just, just trying to determine what would be the best approach to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and basically, uh, de depending on the, on the year, uh, all, the, all the methods work. But, but one thing nice about the sand here, uh, number one, if you get any weeds coming up, the weeds are easy to pull out. But once it's time to pull the plants, to harvest them and transplant them, you can just grab onto them and they pull right out of the ground like that. So nice clean roots. Uh, if they're going in soil, you can't do that. It'll take more work to loosen that soil and get them off. So. Right, an easy mm -hmm. harvest. And you're right. supplementing so. them with some organic fertilizer, I would imagine. Right, because sand does not have much nutrients, so we use something like like a uh, a uh, uh, fish emulsion fertilizer. It's a, it's a complete organic fertilizer. And, uh, water them with that to Excellent. get them started and growing. So, but it's it's pretty pretty straightforward. And one of the big th again, we've done this for a number of years. One of the big things was found it. Onions grown this way in hoop houses, they just don't tend to, uh, to have much of a problem with bolting. And mm -hmm. oftentimes the, the, uh, the bulbs that you purchase in the garden center, you plant those in your garden, they start to grow, and uh, some of them make bulbs, some of them make seed stalks also, and that's not what you want. So, right, right. so we, we don't have a problem with seed stalks uh, in plants grown this way. Okay, so. great, thank okay. you, Jim. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.